All right, all right, before I even get started, I know what's on your mind. Okay, I'm gonna think of the first word that came to your head after you finished watching the final two episodes of The Ultimatum. You ready? Okay, on three. One, two, three. Whack. It, you, you guys didn't feel the same way? No one? What's going on everyone? James here with another real recap and review and guys thanks so much for being patient with me on this one. I wanted to get this recap and review out when the episodes dropped on Wednesday but I was feeling a little under the weather but I'm back and I'm ready to dive into my spoiler free and spoiler filled thoughts on the final two episodes of this season of the ultimatum season two. Now again there are time codes below because I don't want you to get spoiled if you haven't already caught up by this point if you have you can keep watching and then when i get to the spoilers you might want to save the video and come back to it later but thank you netflix for giving me these episodes to watch for review now if you missed my week one episode uh, recap for episodes uh, one through eight you're gonna want to watch that because i have some thoughts and i'm gonna be honest guys uh, season two just uh it's not hitting for me so today we're again going to talk about episode 9 the finale and episode 10 the reunion now if you don't know much about the ultimatum it basically is about five different couples on the verge of marriage one partner is ready to get married and the other isn't sure and an ultimatum is issued so in a course of eight weeks they must commit to marriage or move on and then they of course swap partners and do trial marriages this is not a very healthy show for relationships let's just put it that way but we've got some that are still standing and um, proposals are on the way now before i basically break down everyone who got proposed to and my thoughts on that reunion if it is your first time here at the channel welcome to real james where i love talking about movies tv and all the news in between so if you do too hit the big red button below subscribe to the channel tap on that bell and hit the thumbs up button again if you are a big fan of netflix reality television because if you are this month yes season five of love is blind so i'll be covering that here on the channel as well oh and uh, leave me some comments down below guys and let me know your thoughts on these proposals and the reunion because gosh i have so much i want to say so let's get into my spoiler filled i'm sorry spoiler free <laughs> getting ahead of myself spoiler free recap now right off the bat once i hit play on episode 9 i realized that the finale was shockingly short coming in at 36 minutes now listen guys i know we live in the day and age where netflix shows tend to go long you know 56 minutes i mean that's not really long but you know what i mean that's expected and for some people that might be long for me it's not and i was kind of surprised that we only got 36 minutes because that told me one thing right away that they were going to breeze through these proposals and boy did they ever this finale to me was incredibly weak it was underwhelming and the editing felt like it actually took away from the impact of the proposals themselves none of the moments felt lived in uh, nothing marinated and i kind of felt that they skirted past a lot of the drama or the build up to the drama they both came together and they were like mm, okay we're gonna do this okay will you marry me yes or no and it didn't feel like they kind of sat with these moments for as long as they might have uh in previous seasons of the ultimatum now do i think that these moments needed to be incredibly long and drawn out no but do they need to spend more time in the future if there is a season three of the ultimatum with these proposal segments and the answer is yes we got some really generic uh, montages and recaps of the couple's time on the show and it wasn't that long ago guys it was literally a week ago that's the problem i think with them dropping eight episodes of the ultimatum in one week uh, you kind of just don't let things develop over time and build there's really no momentum in the finale barely had momentum and then when it comes to the reunion with episode 10 this was arguably the weakest reunion in netflix reality tv history there was no real takeaway here for me sure there's a spat between lisa and raya but do i think that was enough to make it must see television no i mean they pretty much nail it with love is blind for the most part you know there are instances where love is blind reunions can be a bit of a mess i'm looking at you season four but this season of the ultimatum i guess didn't have any sort of drama from the first week for it to warrant a really impactful reunion so my expectations were low but boy did the reunion fall even lower than that 
Of course, one of my biggest gripes with the Ultimatum is still the duo of the Lachaise as host. They don't necessarily get it, they don't have real connections with the contestants, and I don't think they even try. They rehash old tropes, and they even throw in this game with the contestants that we'll talk about more in detail in a spoiler-filled recap that's coming up, but none of that worked for me. I felt that the reunion was kind of a waste of time by the end of it all. Uh, luckily, it didn't feel like it overstayed its welcome, but there just wasn't enough there for me to chew on. So, overall, if I'm looking at the ultimatums weeks one and two, and I'm looking at this season, I would say that this is the weakest of the ultimatums so far, clearly, and I would give it three out of five silver goblets yeah guys i i just i really do think that the ultimatum might have run its course maybe netflix needs to stick with where most of the attention is being paid by audiences which is love is blind and too hot to handle even though i don't watch that show but yeah love is blind is the clear winner for netflix reality tv and the ultimatum this season proved that it just, well, that lightning doesn't strike twice, and that is very true in this instance. So, yeah, uh, the ultimatum, kind of a thumbs down for me. But there were some moments that I do want to talk about because I have commentary for you guys. Trust me. So, right now, we're going to get into my spoiler-filled recap and review. So, if you have not watched episodes 9 and 10 yet, please give this video a like, save it to your watch later list, come back and then give me your thoughts because from this point on, <laughs> it's time for spoilers because, woo, guys, these proposals. So let, let's start there. Let's start with the proposals. And of course, the show picks up with Raya and Trey because they teased us at the end of episode eight with their proposal moment. They were trying to do this like cheap build up, to be honest. It never felt authentic to me. It was really overproduced and the music, again, was not hitting. So eventually... Trey gets on one knee, like we all kind of knew he would, gets on one knee, and he asks Raya, will you be my wife? Raya's response, in a way, worried me, if you're a Trey fan, um, and said, she said, oh boy, <laughs> but she said it multiple times, so I'm starting to think, all right, Raya's going to say no, and she's going to walk away, uh, which was my prediction, to be honest, and, well, she says yes, it, okay. It was quite a surprise for me because Raya definitely didn't feel like she was going to say yes or seem that she was even ready for this next step with Trey, but it's possible they had conversations off camera and things that we didn't see. So, well, I'm happy for him. Yeah, I mean, I really hope it works out because you can tell that they love each other. I just know that the whole distance thing might be an issue and, you know, with Raya wanting to live in the city and Trey wanting to start a family in the suburbs and also Raya is still seeking a lot of uh, independence. It seems like a lot of past trauma is still seeping in. So she's, and I'm sure Trey, they both have to kind of get help. So she's got to look for a good therapist, hopefully, because I do think that will help her and it will help Trey. But yeah, guys, so they're engaged. Okay, so we're so far one for one with engagements, right? Uh, I'll keep score for you guys. <laughs> It'll be easy this time. Trust me. So let's move on to Orion and James. I'm going to be honest, y'all. The more and more I hear about James, the more and more I hear about him and Ryan's relationship, something is off to me. Do you guys feel that way too? James does a complete 180 here and says in his testimonial that he's 100% ready for an engagement with Ryan after he was, well, not seeming so sure in episode 8. Now, the music was, of course, trying to catch us off guard. It was a little on the nose, you know, certain instruments that were being used, uh, you know, like dramatic bass and dramatic, uh, you know, ding, ding. Thing, thing, and I'm like, oh, come on, what is this, you know? But then I think back to The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, it's pretty part of the course, but yeah, James gets down on one knee. Now, Ryan, I mean, I had a feeling she would, of course, give an answer, and she, she would say yes, because, hey, she ended up saying yes. Uh, the th thing is, I just, James does not feel like he necessarily was ready to do it. It almost felt like he was maybe pressured to do it, so I wonder, I, I just wonder, what their conversations were off camera after episode eight. Cause remember that dinner scene that they had? It seemed like things were not going in a good direction there. But again, the moments felt kind of downplayed between both Ryan and James, and even them sort of celebrating a bit felt kind of underwhelming. So Ryan and James are also engaged. We're two for two. Are we gonna go a clean sweep guys? L let's see. So it's time for Kat and Alex. 
This is probably my least favorite couple on the show that still remains. Kat and Alex, I don't really see it, and I also don't necessarily like either of them as contestants. I feel like Kat is a bit more shady than she leads on. She's doing a lot of texting, you know, in weeks one, or in week one, but in week two, um, you know, she's clearly still head over heels for Alex, and I guess, hey, they're the perfect pairing for themselves. Uh, but Alex um, says he's still conflicted in his testimonial, and he's confused. So I don't know how he went from that to getting on one knee, because, again, he also proposes to Kat. Here was a shocker to me. I didn't even think Alex was going to get on one knee. I thought Alex might have been the one to say, well, Kat, we're going to have to talk about this. I'm not ready yet, and maybe you're not either type of thing. It's very much in his character to do so. But he didn't do that. He got down on one knee, and Kat, surprisingly, did not say, yeah, okay, before she said yes. Instead, she just said yes. I was really wondering if she would continue to say yeah, because, man, she says yeah so much in this show. So we are three for three right now, and that leaves us with the final couple to go ahead and have their proposal moment, and that is Antonio and Roxanne. Roxanne, you don't have to uh, say yes to Antonio. I was going to say you don't have to turn on the red light, but you know, the police fans out there, fine. Uh, but this is an interesting dynamic because Antonio is really trying and Roxanne is definitely not trying as hard i want to say to foster this relationship she seems more concerned about her business which we later find out is a business for um pasties i'm sure the ladies know what that is and if men you don't you probably should before you meet your future partner for life but yes uh you know Roxanne, entrepreneur antonio trying but antonio continues to say he loves roxanne she's changed my life roxanne continues to say I really like Antonio, I really enjoy being around him, he's helped me, he's helped me, but business, 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 and I'm like, girl, you gotta like, you can make time for both, you know what I mean? And then Roxanne says in her testimonial, she doesn't believe in soulmates, so all of this is leading me to believe that they are not going to get engaged, but Antonio whips out the box and says, Roxanne, will you marry me? And Roxanne surprisingly says yes <laughs> that was the biggest shock of all the proposal moments because roxanne saying yes after everything that transpired i don't know i then wasn't entirely convinced and i think everything that happened in the reunion sort of reaffirmed that feeling of doubt i had for those two so you know what Let's go ahead and talk about it. We're getting into the reunion. This reunion is an hour long and everyone is here, guys, including Lisa and Brian. I'm kind of glad that they brought them, um, unlike what happened with Love is Blind, where we didn't see Jackie and her toxic partner and their toxic selves at the reunion live, but um, everyone is here. So Lisa and Brian fill in the empty seats that were once empty at the time and then they surprisingly bring them in. So. Nick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey reveal that this is the first time in Ultimatum history that all couples have accepted their proposals. So history was made, but it didn't really feel like history was made. So it's time to catch up with Lisa and Brian. I want to get them out of the way first because, of course, we're going to focus a little bit more time on our engaged couples and where they're at now. But let's catch up with Lisa and Brian. Lisa said, hands to the face. Brian, I'm doing a lot of the talking here. Lisa reveals that they gave birth to a baby boy because as you remember, Lisa was pregnant. She ended up leaving the show with Brian because they knew they could not compete in good faith. So they are now proud parents and they're still together. However, there's no mention of marriage. And this is, I think, mainly Brian's doing because Lisa reveals that an ultimatum is still on the table. I mean, y'all got a whole kid together now, so... Pfft. Maybe this whole ultimatum thing probably is going to be thrown out the window eventually, but yeah, Brian seems to be the one a little reserved, not wanting to get down on one knee and propose to Lisa yet. Do I think they'll eventually get married? Yeah, but why do I have this sinking feeling that that timeline might be expedited because of the baby? And of course, they begin showing old clips of Lisa and Brian's time on the show and things that other contestants said, like Roxanne uh, basically telling her c 
contestants or castmates. I, I don't know if Lisa's even pregnant, which is actually pretty foul. But Roxanne is, I don't know. She's a mean girl, right? So Roxanne apologizes to Lisa for not believing that she was pregnant. And it seems like they were actually kind of friends. I wonder how much of their friendship is still intact after that clip aired live for everyone to see. But they seem to make amends for the most part. And of course, the Lachets eventually transition to Lisa and Raya's moment because Lisa called Raya a Hooters B-word. And I'm not saying B as in bartender, I'm saying B as the other B-word. And you know what? I am glad that Raya stuck up for herself and she said that she found Lisa disrespectful because she was, okay? Y'all are playing the game here, right? Lisa brought Brian in and knew what the show was going to entail. Raya was brought on by Trey and Brian and Raya were having a conversation. That's it. And Lisa felt incredibly offended, had that spat with her. And again, during the reunion, they still don't like each other. Lisa told Raya during the reunion that she doesn't care if she was disrespectful. I found that really rude. Lisa continues on about Raya and why she felt that way. She's assuming a lot about Raya. Lisa, to me, is yet another mean girl this season. I, I genuinely think that Lisa has a little bit of insecurity and it might have been rubbing off in the way that she was dealing with Raya. Now, do I think that it was wrong for Lisa to maybe feel a little defensive over Brian? No, but it's the way she went about it. I mean, listen, again, you signed up for the show, Lisa. What are you doing? So, yeah, I, I was surprised that Lisa still has this grudge against Raya. I actually wish Trey would have spoken up in these moments because while I understand Trey feels Raya is capable to fight her own battles, you're her fiance. You have to step in and stick up for your fiance. I mean, Trey, what are you doing sitting back and saying absolutely nothing? You need to engineer a response, homeboy. Seriously. So Lisa says that, of course, and reveals like we talked about earlier, there's still an ultimatum on the table for Brian. Brian better start thinking about these wedding plans and stuff. So we'll see what happens there. I mean, do I think they get married? Yeah, but I don't know when. And not too long after that entire segment, we get yet another segment before we catch up with our engaged couples. This time, Nick Lachey reveals they're going to play the nearly wed game. <laughs> How punny. So the game kind of stinks, bro. I'm sorry. This game was really, really dragging along. It was a chore to sit through. None of the questions, none of the answers were even or remotely interesting. Basically, all the contestants had to answer questions as you would think your partner would answer them. You know, things like, um, who do you think your partner was more nervous about seeing during the reunion? But all of this did not materialize to anything. There was no drama. There was no pushback. It was weird they answered and that was it so it just felt flat however a couple of takeaways were the fact that raya kept shooting death stares at everyone for their answers was really interesting and then lisa was alluding to liking women as well i almost wonder if brian knows that or knew that before that day i'm, I'm pretty sure he probably did okay so now it's time to catch up with our engaged couples let's start with raya and trey they reveal that they're having a destination wedding in spring 2025. Kind of smart, because then you can, of course, uh, have the liberty of choosing your family, the family that you don't really want to be there. But because it's a destination wedding, they might not be able to make it anyway. Okay. Now, Trey and Raya agreed that they're still working to get onto the same page together and maybe working through some differences. So they are clearly trying to overcome some things before they actually get married. And then Raya reveals that she was pregnant with Trey's baby about two years ago and had a miscarriage, unfortunately. So that kind of tracks with her feelings and reservations about children earlier in the show back in week one. So again, it's a sad situation all the way around, but I do pray that they can work through some of their differences and also overcome some of their fear and trauma together so that they can, of course, have a strong marriage. So we're hopeful, of course, for Raya and Trey, but I don't have any more notes for them, and I apologize for my voice cracking again. Still overcoming what I had to go through earlier this week. So let's now transition to Ryan and James. Y'all, all the, all the moments with them just are awkward awkward they reveal that they've set a day for their wedding and that james proposed again in a more private intimate setting 
off of the camera. You know, that seemed cute. It was nice of James to think of Ryan and you know what? Maybe the proposal moments were not as favored by the contestants as we thought. It did not seem like any of them were comfortable. So it was nice of James to maybe create another unique memory for them. And Ryan revealed that they are currently living together, but not together and just by themselves together. They're living together with Ryan's parents and siblings. That's a little awkward. But it's not as awkward as this segment that they put together called James After Dark. It is literally a montage of him getting physical with Ryan and revealing some of his fetishes. I almost vomited in my mouth even uttering that sentence. It's just gross, you guys. It's gross, okay? There are limits, I think, to reality TV and things that you should share and things that maybe don't work as well. This falls into the latter category. Why? What's the point? To create headlines? Maybe a viral moment? To add some spice to this otherwise unseasoned reunion? It doesn't matter. None of it worked, and I do not think what they conjured up had the effect that they thought it would have on both Ryan and James and the rest of the contestants. Instead, everyone looked like they threw up in their mouth a little. Like me. Okay, so now it's time to talk about Kat and Alex, and again, I don't have many notes for them, but they did reveal they're getting married as well in May of next year. There was a little back and forth, a little, you know, catty conversation with Roxanne and Kat. <laughs> catty conversation. I didn't plan that, I promise. But Kat tells Roxanne, you still don't know me, alright? You still don't know me. And... I think this stems from the fact that Roxanne blew up with Alex. I'm sure Alex texted Kat and said, Hey, Roxanne's being rude. And Kat was like, Yeah, well, Antonio also called you a scumbag. Which Antonio, I believe he apologized for, if I'm not mistaken. But still, Kat and Alex, they do not like Roxanne and Antonio in the slightest. But at least Kat revealed to the world that she will work on not saying yeah. And, of course, not being as much of an agreeable listener because there was a moment where Roxanne told Kat girl let's run the footage you were agreeing with me when I told you a lot of the faults about Alex so yeah I mean Kat it was on camera girl alrighty y'all so now let's talk about our final engaged couple Antonio and Roxanne who probably had the most interesting bits in the reunion among our engaged couples but before we even get started I, I have to ask you guys a question what was up with that feathered dress that Roxanne was wearing it was giving a vulture you know spider-man's villain so i i don't necessarily know what the design choice was but uh, okay moving on antonio was being secretly shady this entire reunion he said little things like Roxanne barely said yes, which was a big oh boy moment, and Antonio was just giving looks, and his body language made him seem like he was not thrilled with Roxanne's answers. In my opinion, Roxanne still believes that she's in a league of her own, which makes Antonio feel less than, especially when they're engaged. Roxanne also does something, and talks about it in this reunion, that makes Antonio a little upset and sad which is the fact that Roxanne won't wear her engagement ring. And Antonio even went out above and beyond to buy more rings to surround and stack her engagement ring. But Roxanne has it in the box with her on set, but she's not wearing it. And she says that she doesn't feel obliged to wear a ring because why should she have to be the only one to wear a ring? Why can't Antonio? Um, hey Roxanne, he'll wear a ring when he gets his wedding band. Like when y'all get married? It'll happen. So, I don't know. Roxanne, for me, is a complicated contestant this season of The Ultimatum. But ultimately, I still think she's in her own way. Uh, and Antonio is unfortunately on the receiving end of a lot of her lack of affirmation. You know, whether it be by words or by physical action. It seems like Antonio is pretty much fed up, to be honest with you. And do I think that they'll eventually get married? Well, they didn't say they even planned a marriage. And Roxanne even reveals that, and I quote, she can't fit a marriage into her life right now. That's bad, y'all. That's not good news. So do I think they get married? Uh, no, I do not. So I'm really curious. Whenever we find out more information about where our contestants are now, if they are still together or if they're married, if they've maybe called off the engagement for now, who knows? But yeah, none of this seems promising and Roxanne really needs to stop playing with Antonio's heart. 
Stop it. And that's all she wrote for the final week of The Ultimatum Season 2, Episodes 9 and 10. Wow. Um, well, there was a lot to talk about. I just wish maybe this finale and these final two episodes were as impactful as it sounded. But hey, if you stuck around this far, y'all, you're going to want to hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, and get loud in the comments and let me know what you thought of these final two episodes and my recap and review. Because again, that's it for the Ultimatum Season 2. There's nothing left. But Love is Blind Season 5 is right around the corner this month. So guess what? We're covering it. I'll be here giving you all my commentary. And I'm so excited. Alrighty, y'all. Again, thanks so much for watching. And I'll catch you at the next screening.